So right now we've got a pretty good representation of the main animals in the uh, northern range of Yellowstone. Missing a few, but we uh, do plan to be adding those as we go forward. But there are many, many, many other animals obviously living there, most of them pretty small. Many different bird species, small mammals, squirrels, and uh, the like. And so we really do want to represent them um, to, to make the wilderness feel inhabited by all these uh, all this wildlife. So over time, we do hope to, we do hope to add um, some of them at least. But um, in the meantime, we're using audio to create uh, natural soundscapes that really capture what it sounds like to to be there in Yellowstone. So here's how we're doing that. We have this master spreadsheet about ambient audio um, for all the uh, animals in Amethyst Mountain. And um, Susan has done um, a great deal of research to identify all the birds and other animals that you might hear when you're out there in the wilderness and find um, sound effects of those animals uh, from various sources. We are being very careful to make sure that these are all accurate and authentic sounds for these animals. Helps that Susan's been a lifelong bird watcher and she knows <laughs> what these things sound like. Um, but she has done a lot of research to document, as you can see here, where these birds, and mainly birds, but other animals, um, where they live, what seasons they are in those areas are, and if they are, this is kind of the standard uh, bird watching terminology, C is for common, A is for abundant, really common, um, R is for rare. So right now we're focused on the birds, so uh, I'm working on the low elevation forest, um, sound uh, collection so i'm just going down the list so here we are white crown sparrow white crown sparrow the sparrow white crown is the file name sparrow white crown there it is and i just drag it over here and drop it in here okay next one mountain chickadee chickadee mountain is the name of the file chickadee actually chickadee mountain 2 is the best one she found and so i am just uh, building this collection Ruffed grouse. Have you ever heard of rough grouse in the wild? It's really weird. Here, I'm going to play that one. Where is it? Grouse, rough beats. This is their, um, their mating call here. They, they produce this by beating their wings. So I guess it's a kind of call, just not made with their, with their voice. Isn't that... Isn't that wild? And uh, I've been in the woods in the fall and you'd hear that in the woods and you're like, what is that? So we'll have that. That's going to be cool. All right. Clark's Nutcracker. Clark's Nutcracker. Clark's Nutcracker. So this is not the most, you know, exciting, visually dramatic, uh, but it's really cool to have this uh, collection of sounds exhaustively researched and, coll and collected by Susan A Warbling Vireo. What does that sound like? Huh, that's nice. Warbler, yellow rumped. Aren't bird names funny? Yellow rumped warbler. Hairy woodpecker. You know what that sounds like, right? That's their call. That's the other sound they make. You can see some of these, you know, you think of a bird call as just being one little short thing. But one thing that Susan has educated me about is that this whole thing with these four bursts is a complete call. They're, they're saying something and it takes them these four bursts to say it. It's not just a one-off individual thing. There, that's what a green-tailed toey looks like making this call. So in addition to the birds, I'm also setting up, um, calling here, uh, distant voices. So this is uh, mostly mammals that are, you know, a kilometer or two or three away, but you can still hear them. So elk, bull elk bugling, um, um, coyotes yipping and barking in the distance, wolf, pack, wolf packs howling in the distance, 
Um, even sandhill cranes flying overhead occasionally. So we've got um, similar sound collections for these. And so here I'm setting up um, how these are going to be in the game. So just like with the birds, but now putting them into the game. I've already done this for the birds. So here I've got this collection of daytime distant voices. I'm putting one in each corner of the map. So I have one in the corners and then I'm going to put one or maybe a couple um, in the middle. So these are all, they all sound distant with the, the way the audio was captured out in, in the wilderness. And uh, so it doesn't really matter how far you are from the sound effect. It sounds like it's a, a kilometer or two away. So I've done this for the daytime ones here now um, for the nighttime ones, because those are a little different. Um, some animals are active more active at night than in the daytime. So again, placing these at the four corners of the map and then uh, putting a couple in the middle as well. So let's go see how all these sound in the game. What we're going for is a sound of a forest with life in it, but not, you know, it's not a tropical forest where it's just a cacophony. Um, especially in the fall, I think there's probably less uh, density of sounds. And uh, so let's just stop here. I've turned off the music so we can hear, just listen to all this ambient sound. That wind is, that wind is pretty nice. Uh -huh. Raven. Some bugling elk out there, some bull elk. That's a red squirrel. I don't know if you've ever been heckled by a squirrel up in a tree, but it gets it gets old pretty fast. And you know, if you're there, you can try to shoo it away or something. But in the game, you really just have to move along um, to get away from it. So we, we even though the squirrels actually do <laughs> chatter like that for very long stretches of time, um, we want to keep it so it doesn't get too obnoxious in the game. And so each each animal gets its say you know, five, 10, maybe 15 seconds for some of the longer cow calls, um, but doesn't go on and on and, and drive you crazy if you're hanging out in one place. <laughs> that is so great. There's the sandhill crane flying overhead. So some tweaks I think are still warranted. Um, the bugle and the coyotes, those distant uh, animal mammal sounds are too frequent. Need to dial that down some. But overall, this is uh, just adds so much to have these uh, animal sounds all around you. And of course, those are mixed in with the, the wind and the rain and the thunder and lightning to really create an immersive soundscape which is our goal. Um, of course, if you don't like that, then uh, you can open up the audio options and adjust the volume of that to uh, the music. We've got uh, more refined uh, options here so you can have more control over the sounds if those squirrels are driving you nuts. <laughs> so as you can see, we're making good progress on this and, uh, and on many other things that are just not as interesting to show even as this, but are necessary to get the game in good shape for uh, releasing it into early access for PC and Mac um, soon.